How's it going guys? This is Jason and welcome back to Subnautica. In this episode we're going to be doing the kelp forest biome. So uh, we can actually see it from our life pod right here. Uh, off in the distance it's those vines. So let's go ahead and check it out. And I'm definitely excited for today's episode because I know that in the kelp forest we're going to find some of the materials that we've been missing for a lot of the blueprints that we have unlocked. Look at this. So different from the safe shallows. So murky and green. Well, let's start scanning stuff. Let's start with these uh, vine things. Creep vine. Kelp species concentrated in large forests in shallow, sandy waters. Loose roots anchor the plant to the seafloor from where it grows steadily towards the surface in pursuit of sunlight. Assessment vital alien resource edi edible construction applications. Cool. What are these uh, yellow things on it? Creep find seeds. We can actually grab some of these. Oh, what blueprint did we get? Uh, assessment, vital alien resource, construction applications. Mature cream vine plants that have survived the predation of small herbivores produce these bioluminescent seed clusters. Cool. So what was the blueprint we unlocked? So we unlocked a, bl a blueprint. Oh, lubricant. I think we need lubricant for the sea glide. Okay. Let's check out some of the creatures we've got in this biome. I see these big shark-looking things. I think this is the guy that I saw in the geyser who wasn't supposed to be there. Stalker. Why can't I scan you? Is the creep vine in the way? He's like throwing around the trash. Stop moving around. He's so twirly. Finally. I want to get a, a safe distance before I read it. He looks mean. What do we got? Fauna carnivores. Streamline predator encountered in the kelp forest in weight of prey, leaving the safety of the shallows to feed. Assessment stalker teeth may have applications in enabled glass fabrication. How do we get their teeth? I see other fish. What is this thing? Hoverfish. It's like a little hovercraft. A small, cautious herbivore com commonly found in kelp-rich environments. Edible. Here's another new one. Hoopfish. It's colorful. Small, school-mentality prey fish with a unique method of propulsion and a distant relative of the bladder fish. Assessment edible. Lots of edible things. I should be grabbing these if they're edible. I'm gonna cook them up. Give me that hoverfish. What else do we have down here? Oh, really? Oh, I need I need to get oxygen. They kept warning me and I kept ignoring it. Okay, we're safe. Yeah, let's do that self-scan that it recommended. Trace amounts of farm bacteria, what? But I was so careful. Oh, I think these are the stalker teeth that the entry for the stalker was mentioning. Yeah. Assessment applications is a natural substrate in enameled glass fabrication. I guess we should probably take a couple of these. What blueprint is that? Oh, enameled glass. Okay, cool. Oh god! They're coming right for me! Get away! Sweet Jesus. Oh! This one's differently colored. It's asking me to scan it. Specimen with symptom of infection. This, organi this organism is displaying signs of bacterial infection. Is he still coming towards me? 
What else did it say? Warning, maybe contagious, avoid. Oh god! <laughs> Look how it says avoid as soon as he's right next to me. Get away! Okay, I think we lost him. Need oxygen as well. God, this biome's huge. Looks like it's getting a little dark. Let's pull out our flashlight. Oh, what are you? Aye, aye. I'm gonna take one of these. An extreme evolutionary adaptation where 90% of the life form's body mass is dedicated to the ocular cavity. Assessment edible, low calorie count. Weird. Something else I noticed we have down here is this new mineral, salt. And I believe we need salt for making... Oh god, where'd you come from? We need salt for making cured food, which won't spoil. And also for making uh, disinfected water, I believe. Alright, well I think that's about all the scanning I wanted to do. Now that we have those Creepvine seed clusters, let's head back to base and craft some of the things that, that needed that for their recipe. Alright, well first of all, let's cook and eat all these new animals we discovered. We got cooked hoverfish, firm, low-fat reptilian flesh. Herbs and spices? Are we gonna find some of those? Cooked aye aye. High in fluids, low calorie count, hard to keep down. Yeah, not that not that surprising. It's a large eyeball. Cooked hoopfish. Never eat the antenna. Alright. And we obviously we've got the cured versions of those. So one thing I want to make sure I do is make the survival knife, which requires silicone rubber and titanium. Silicone rubber is something we just learned how to make with creep find seed clusters, so let's make some of that. And now we should be able to make a survival knife, yeah. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Braxis Prime. The knife remains hmm. the only exception. So we can slash stuff with this. So another thing I wanted to make sure I could make was a habitat builder. Because that's how we start making bases. Fabricates habitat compartments and appliances from raw materials. We've already got a battery and a wiring kit. And we're actually going to use the depleted battery that we exhausted in the caves. And we still need a computer chip. We made a wiring kit last episode too. But uh, yeah, let's look at the computer chip ingredients. We need copper wire, which we've already made before. Gold and table coral sample. Which now we can collect now that we have the survival knife. I think it's right outside, actually. This stuff right here is table coral. So we just slice it. We just grab two of those. So now we can make our computer chip. Multi-purpose CPU. And that unlocks advanced wiring kit. And that allows us to make a habitat builder. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're definitely building some bases this, this episode. So we can also build the repair tool with silicon rubber, cave sulfur, and titanium. Multi-purpose repair tool, functional in all environments. Let's get that. And that means we can repair some of the stuff that's in our life pod right now. Let's go ahead and equip it. Make this uh, slot number four. Yeah. Okay, so we'll repair this. Hooray! Status okay. Excellent. Oh, now we have an environment scan. It is not recommended to explore this environment without hazardous material suits and extensive support apparatus. So basically go into places prepared. I feel like we're already doing that for the most part, except for those radiation areas in the last episode, but we'll be more careful next time. This is a radio that plays messages. I think I'm going to hold off on doing that, though, because I know that that progresses the story, and we're mostly just going to sort of discover the story as we explore on our own. I don't want to accelerate anything. So we can also make fins to make us swim a bit faster with some silicon rubber, so let's make that with more of our creep, creep vine seed clusters.
translate vertical limb movements underwater into forward thrust and hence swim speed by approximately 15%. I feel like that was a message for way earlier in the game. It expected me to get these a lot sooner. All right, now that we have this survival knife, let's go ahead and harvest one of these creep vines. Yeah. What does this give us? Uh, it gives us fiber mesh, which is another thing I think we need for a bunch of blueprints that we're missing. Uh, what, what other blueprint do we have unlocked? Pathfinder tool, what? That's a new one. Deploys holographic pathfinder discs used to map their way back out of caves or hard to nav navigate spaces. Oh, we're definitely making that for the next time we do a caves episode. Alright, so now we can make fiber mesh. Let's go ahead and make a, bun a bunch of them, because I know that uh, tons of recipes need this. Uh, I pretty much just filled up on creep find samples so that we can make a bunch of these. Oh, that's it? Alright. So what can we make now? First aid kit. So we can actually craft these now, and I think I'm going to make at least one. And then now we can have the ability to basically stockpile these, since we can craft them. We don't just need to wait for the fabricator. Well, I think next, now that we have the habitat builder, uh, we're going to go build a base. And I think the plan for this series, we're going to try and build a base in every major biome. Uh, you can't build them in the caves mostly, but uh, for most other biomes, we're going to build a base there so that we have something nearby in every area. All right, let's start by building a base in the safe shallows. So I think right here is a pretty good area. We'll start by building a foundation. Okay, we'll put our foundation right here. And actually, what we can do is, just to get an idea for where our base is gonna branch out to, we're gonna place a bunch of proxy foundations as well without committing the resources to them, just by pressing the button once. It should just commit like one titanium to it. And we'll sort of have an idea of where our base is gonna go when we're constructing the tubes and stuff. Okay, I got the surrounding foundations laid out, so we have an idea of where the base could go. Uh, let's start out by making a compartment. And I think looking at this layout, we're going to do a X compartment. Let's go to that and place it right here. So we'll have these three branching out into other uh, tubes, and then we'll have this front one be a hatch that we can enter from. Yeah. And I think we're also going to put a vertical connector right on top. And then we can have a second story to the base as well. We'll make another X compartment there. Hmm. Actually, no. We'll make this one a T compartment. Because I want to have a window right here as well. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I'm laying out all these tubes first is because when you place appliances inside this compartment, uh, it, it bugs out and doesn't allow you to place connecting tubes there sometimes. So we're going to place all the tubes first and then populate the inside with appliances. Okay, so we're probably going to place another compartment right here. So let's do a high compartment here. We'll do another one over here. And then one more this way. I want to have power for the base so it can give me oxygen. So right on top of the top story, we'll do a solar panel. We need one more titanium somehow. Well, I brought a, lo a wall locker so I can store more supplies. So we'll take some... I do not have titanium here? What? Okay. Yeah, so placing these temporary foundations, I think, does commit one titanium. So that's probably where all my titanium went. Okay, we got that titanium. Let's go ahead and place that solar panel so we have power. Yeah. Power restored. All primary systems online. Let's get inside. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you. And now that we've got uh, these connectors, we can place appliances in this starting compartment without worrying about bugs. So let's start out by doing a fabricator, I think, so we can craft stuff here. Yeah, so what did that require? Uh, titanium, gold, and coral sample, which we have. 
place this right here. And then we're going to have a wall locker also, so we can just store stuff in this base. We're starting out pretty much making the things that we already have in the life pod, but there's a lot more stuff eventually we're going to have that'll make this way better than the life pod base. What other stuff do we want in this starting compartment? Probably a radio, like we have in the life pod. We'll put that right here. And then I think I want a whole room dedicated to resource storage. Uh, we can, at that point, we can re we can basically transfer over everything we have in the ton of wall lockers we have back at the life pod into some actual lockers inside the base. Okay, so I extended this hallway. Now we can just put a bunch of wall lockers in here. Let's do that. Where are those at? Not wall lockers, uh, actual lockers. These are the larger ones. They require a bit of quartz, but that's fine. Let's put as many as we can in here. Okay, so I made this compartment just for lockers. And unfortunately, you can't name these lockers that have the bigger storage, but I think you can make a sign. Where's that at? Yeah, we can make signs. We're just going to put signs next to each of the lockers to indicate what they're storing. Okay, so I ended up making this corridor for consumable items specifically. And I went with these, these little wall lockers as opposed to the regular lockers. Uh, just because even though they do store less, uh, you can fit more of them together side by side, and they also have the perk of having the, the nameable title on them. So we've got stockpiles of batteries, cells, water, food, first aid, flares, uh, deployable lockers, and equipment. Uh, so that's what this corridor is for. I think I'm going to make another corridor in this direction for our resources. And that should be probably a bit bigger since we do have a lot of resources. Okay, so it took a while, but we finally transferred over all of the resources we had back at LifePod 5 into all these lockers that I constructed for my new base. I also made these signs in the corridors uh, showing what all the rooms are. So we've got resources over here. Uh, back this way is the landing where we have the, uh, the hatch outside into the water. And over here is the one I showed before with consumables. Then I also made a third room for resources as well, but this one is unused, but I'm certain we're going to go over our capacity in the first room. So this will be the, the fallback area for storage after we run out of space there. Okay, so I think the next thing I want to make in this little base we've got is a medical kit fabricator. And we've already constructed the materials required for it, and we want to put it right here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now we can start generating med kits over time. Do we get a free one right away? No, we don't. It's starting at 0%. But okay, yeah, so we've got this first little room is sort of like our... I'm calling it the landing in these signs, but it's basically like our little command unit with the same kind of stuff we'd expect uh, back at LifePod 5. Fabricator, radio, medkit fabricator, and some general purpose storage. And those other rooms are more uh, special purpose. So something else I want to make sure I do is construct a ladder to the second story so we can actually access that. Let's go ahead and place that right here. Cool, and now we can actually go upstairs, right? Yeah, it just teleports us immediately. Nice. We haven't yet figured out a purpose for the upstairs, but I'm sure we'll find one. Okay, so these are our two resource rooms here. Uh, I think I want to connect these tubes, though. We might, we might eventually have a fourth room in this side, but for now we're just going to connect the tubes for the sake of being thorough. And something else I think our base could use is some windows. We are missing those views. So let's see. Probably not one right here, because this looks right under the rock, but... Maybe one right here. Yeah. Gotta make sure we watch out for our hull strength, but we do have 2.5. It's still enough. And you know what? I think I want to try building one of these uh, glass connectors. Let's see if we can build this on the top level here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's try building one of these L glass components as well. Right here seems fine. Okay, we're left with one hole integrity. That should be okay. Cool. Oh, interesting. This thing doesn't actually connect. Well, let's get rid of that then. Okay, and as the last little finishing touch to our base, we're going to take a beacon, 
put that in our quick items. And we're going to place this right at our base so we always know where it is. Right here. Name is going to be... Safe Shallows Sea Base. Alright. And that's it. Now we've got a finished base. Not finished, but... This is the base we came up with. I, I took way too long making this thing. Uh, but... It's got everything we want in a starting area. Uh, we're going to add to this as we discover new technologies. But uh, there it is. Safe shallow sea base. I'm happy with it. So from here, I've actually depleted all my stockpiles of food and water. So I think now that we have access to salt in the kelp uh, forest biome, we're going to start making preserved food and disinfected water, which is more, uh, more effective than regular filtered water we were making before. Okay, I went out and collected one of every animal, and I've got some salt, and we're just going to create cured versions of all the all the foods. So we've got cured whole fish. Salting has given the flesh a moose-like consistency, dehydrating but keeps well. Cured peeper, preserved in salt, a healthy and nutritious meal, dehydrating but keeps well. Cured bladderfish, remin reminiscent of jerky. Interesting. Cured garyfish, the only flavor is salt. Cured hoverfish, the crispy salty legs are the highlight. Cured boomerang, tough but flavorsome. Cured eye eye, shriveled and unpleasant. And cured hoopfish, this fish actually tastes like fish. Huh. Okay, so we've stored all of the food that we just cured in here. And it looks like from these, the most nutritious one is cured peeper. No surprise there. It says, it says very nutritious in its description. So I think in the future we're just going to cure the peepers unless we find something else that's uh, even more beneficial. Okay, so next I think we're going to want to start making uh, disinfected water. Uh, and you make that with bleach. Bleach requires salt, which we now have access to in the kelp forest, and coral tube samples. So let's find some coral tube samples. I think we can do it right here. Smack, 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 smack. That should be enough. So now we can make bleach. Bleach is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds. Antibacterial and purifying water. Oh, cleaning wounds, interesting. And yeah, now we can make disinfected water times two. Okay, so I think disinfected water is the thing we're going to start stockpiling because you can make two of them at a time and uh, you can do it without having to go search for those bladder fish. You can just do it with salt and the uh, coral tube samples that are plentiful. Okay, so now that we've pretty much finished our base and we've stockpiled a little bit of cured food, I think we're going to start making tools for exploration again into the kelp forest. One thing I want to make for that is the sea glide. So let's take a look at the ingredients for that. Equipment, I think. Oh no, it's probably a deployable. Yeah, Sea Glide. We need lubricant, copper wire, and titanium. I think we can make all of those. Okay, so lubricant is just something you make out of creepvine seed clusters. So let's make that. And we've already got ti titanium and copper wire. Okay, so it's common to most vehicles and power plants. Cool. And there we go. Converts torque into thrust underwater via propeller. Oh yeah. What does this thing look like? Neat. Let's test it out real quick. Oh my god, so much faster, and it has a little mini-map. That's awesome. Well, that's going to make exploration way faster. So something I, I mentioned we could make out of our depleted batteries is power cells. High-capacity mobile power source. So I've already got in my inventory uh, four depleted batteries that we've gone through since we were base building. Let's go ahead and turn that into two power cells. Oh man, they're so much bigger. 
And I'm not sure we have a use for power cells just yet. I think they're used for like vehicles, but uh, we're gonna store it in our stockpile for now anyway, just so that those empty batteries aren't going to waste. Oh, and I almost forgot something I wanna make sure I make now that we have lead and also fiber mesh is a radiation suit. With this, we can finally explore those radioactive areas that were in the safe shallows that we couldn't fully get to. Does that auto-equip? It does, nice. So yeah, we're gonna revisit some of those areas that were too dangerous earlier. Uh, another thing we can make now that we have uh, fiber mesh available is a rebreather. Uh, conserves oxygen when diving deeper, absorbs and recycles CO2 into breathable air. I don't think we're gonna need this for any of the the most immediate future biomes, but uh, when we get into some of the deeper ones, we're going to need this. So we'll just make it while we have the stuff for it. Okay, just a couple more tools we're going to make before we head out exploring. We can make the Pathfinder tool now that we have creepvine seed clusters. Deploys holographic Pathfinder discs used to map a way out of caves or hard to navigate spaces. So we're probably going to use that in the next caves episode. And we can also make an air bladder. We need silicone rubber for that. Uh, let's make that. Air bladder. Emergency flotation device. Chemical reaction produces lighter than air gas for fast personal buoyancy. I think we're actually going to make that one of our quick items. Let's put the sea glide in slot 4. Air bladder slot 5. Sounds good. And that can actually replace our air pump for most uses. Uh, it, it only takes up one inventory slot as opposed to, like, 11, and uh, it should be pretty fast getting back to the surface. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to do was move my grab trap from the uh, life pod over to my new base. But uh, I think just about everything is done. We've got all these tools now. Uh, let's put this back in slot 5, but we've got all these tools now. We've got the radiation suit. I think we're going to go visit that... Uh, some of those wrecks that we couldn't uh, fully investigate last time because we didn't have the repair tool or we didn't have the radiation suit. So let's go discover those. Okay, so I think this was the first large wreck and there was a door we couldn't quite open because of uh, needing the repair tool. Am I right? I thought we opened this door already. Did it just close itself again? Yeah. Okay, let's equip the repair tool. Probably gonna need oxygen at some point as well. Okay, let's try the air bladder. Whee! See that, I can wait till the last possible second and then I get oxygen immediately. Cool, huh? Head back down and see what we got in that door that we opened. What's in here? Scannables. Mobile vehicle bay fragment. Oh man, mobile vehicle bay sounds good. Another beacon fragment that's just titanium to us. Anything over here? Sea glide fragment. Okay, we've seen that already. So really, the, the big grab was the mobile vehicle thing. Oh, another one. Sweet, that's two out of three in one place. Is that all there is in this room? I think it might be. Okay, so I think this wreck is now fully explored. Let's head to the next one. Oh man, you move so much faster with this sea glide. And I think here we are at the next large rack. Yeah, this is where we threw that first flare. Do we even get a prompt for radiation anymore? Looks like no. Now that we've got the radiation suit, it doesn't even bother you with it. So let's pull out the repair tool. I think we needed that for the roof. Alright, what do we have up here? We can also just quickly check if there's anything we missed on the ground floor since we were sort of in a rush. But, uh... Ooh. Looks like a bunch of beacon fragments. Is this, gonna be a, is this just gonna be a big titanium hull? 
Why would they put like six beacon fragments in the same room? What is this? Oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't ignore that. How do I get out of here? Yeah, what was this thing I was about to scan? Command chair. Cool. We'll take it. Anything else? Oh, wait a second. There's a little hatch in here. Where does this go? Oh, I should have refilled my oxygen before I went down here. I'm gonna get lost. Is it just more beacon fragments? There's gotta be something else here. This is very disorienting, I have to say. Um, I don't see any other... It, did, did it just bring me in the secret room for beacon fragments? That seems weird. Yeah, weird. I guess there's nothing else in here. Okay, I guess that's it for this wreck. Okay, so next we're going to visit a couple small wrecks that we weren't even able to get close to in the safe shallows because of the radiation. Let's see if we can find them now. I think I see one already. Yeah, it looks like we found the first one. Let's check it out. Lots of fragments we've already scanned before. No surprise, coming from the safe shallows. We're just looking for anything new. What is this? Coffee vending machine, score! Dude, I love me some coffee. Uh, what? Where's my blueprint unlocked message? I did get it, right? Or is it just a fragment? Well, that, that on its own is worth the trip here. Uh, are these crash fish? Looks like they could have been, but they're not here at the moment. That's good. This is very tight quarters for crash fish. Hmm. Okay, I think that's everything for this small wreck. Huh. I, well, I think some of my information might be wrong. The guide I'm using says that the next crash is in that direction, but that's, uh, that's outside the safe shallows. That's in, like... The, one of the biomes that's later on. So I think that may be bad info about any points of interest that are in the safe shallows. So we're actually going to continue on with the new locations that are in the kelp forest. So let's go find some of those. What is this weird sparkly peeper? Enzyme host peeper? What? Recommended further research into enzyme origin. A paper specimen was observed emitting a faint fluorescent enzyme trail engaging in unusual behavioral patterns. That is so weird. Uh, anyway, I had my overlay up because uh, I'm looking for... Let me just collect this thing. I'm so distracted by this. My inventory's full. No! No. Uh, we're going to drop a titanium. Let me get this peeper. Is it, like, special? No, it's just a regular peeper. 30 seconds. Huh. Well, let me drop him then. If he's not special. Um, anyway. The reason I had the overlay up is because I'm looking for... I think before we start exploring the points of interest at the... Kelp Forest? Oh god, we almost died. Uh, I think we want to establish a small base of operations in the kelp forest. So we're going to build a quick base. Nothing as elaborate as the one in the safe shallows, but just something that has uh, oxygen and a fabricator and some of the basic stuff. Okay, I think right around here is going to be a good place. So let's go ahead and set that up. And there we go. Nothing too, uh, nothing too fancy, just basic uh, compartment, solar panel, foundation. We've got the beacon there to let us know where it is. And inside we've just got some walkers. Medical kit fabricator, radio, and fabricator. So now we have a b small base of operations for uh, exploring the places in the kelp forest. Huh. Something I noticed right next to my new kelp base is these uh, stinger things. Drooping stinger. Uh, zero pho photosynthetic cells detected. Implies carnivorous adaptation to low light environments. Assessment avoid. Okay. So it looks like it's a hazard. They look pretty cool, though. Okay. Let's go ahead and explore some of the points of interest around the kelp forest. Oh, I think I see the first one. Looks like a large wreck. Let's 
check this out. We got a door, we got some scrap metal. We're not gonna pick that up. Oh God, <sighs> thing fucking scared me. <laughs> Where did he come from? There's more of those uh, jellyfish. That looks like a pretty deep cave. Oh, oh God, it's right behind me. No. Jesus, that stalker <laughs> startled me. Beacon fragment, okay. Bioreactor fragment. Oh my. What is a bioreactor? On planets where organic matter is plentiful, but sunlight is not, a reliable bioreactor will frequently prove the most efficient power solution. That sounds like we might want to use that eventually for our kelp forest base. Can you get out of here? Can I knife these guys? All right, I need oxygen. I need to get out of here first. We'll come back. See ya. Okay. Anything on top here? Got another beacon fragment. So I don't... Did we get the blueprint for the bioreactor, or was it just a fragment? I don't remember. But uh, yeah, we might want to look into making that for our kelp forest base. What else do we have here? What's he screaming at? Mm, I see an interior here. Okay, what do we have? Lots of scannables. Sea glide fragment, we already have that. Mobile vehicle bay fragment. Oh, yes. And what is this? Data box. Dude, we can make a compass? That's going to be so useful. We need the repair tool for this. Those stalkers aren't going to come in here, are they? Let me just repair this, and then we'll probably get oxygen and come back and go and see what's inside. Okay. Let's open the door first. Oh, it just slides open. Cool. Actually, if this is small enough, we might be able to just scan everything in here real quick. What is this? Oh, it's just more mobile, we <laughs> mobile vehicle bay fragment pieces. Grab trap. Looks like there's not a lot in here. Or not a lot that we haven't already discovered. Yeah, I think that's everything in here. Okay. Oh, there's a compartment. Oh, wait, no, I don't think that opens. All right, we need to get out of here before we run out of oxygen. Okay, I think that was everything on the interior. Is there anything else outside? I see lots of debris, but is there any more scannables? Is he behind me? He is. Can I get these guys to back off if I stab them? The combat knife? Seems to do something. Is he running away? Okay, that seems to work. I need to remember that. It doesn't seem to kill them. It does seem to make them get away from me. Anything else? It looks like that might have been it for this large wreck. Just that interior with the uh, mobile vehicle base stuff. And we found the bioreactor fragment, which is kind of cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's it for here. Oh, did I run out of power? Oh, I didn't bring an extra battery. All right, I got to... Go back to probably the safe shallows base and restock restockpile my batteries. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck is that? Ah. Uh, ah, uh, what? What is this? No, get away. That scared me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to get close to that yet. I think we'll deal with that another episode or something. <laughs> it was creepy. It was like whispering to me with, in like the voice of the computer. Um, okay. What can we craft right now? This compass requires copper wire and wiring kit. We can make that. And the mobile vehicle bay requires lubricant, power cell, titanium. We can make all of this. So yeah, we're going to go back to safe shallows, restock our batteries, probably get some water, and build some of these things. Also, I just noticed these power line things. It looks like we're transferring power from Safe Shallows base to Kelp Forest base. I guess because in the Kelp Forest there's not enough solar energy just yet. But that's kind of interesting. I wonder how much that... I wonder, like, how often you can do that. Alright, we got a battery from our storage. Let's switch out the power source. Yeah. We'll store the old cell... The old battery in the cells thing, so we can make a new one once we have one more battery. Also, we're going to need one of these cells to make the mobile vehicle base, so we'll take that. We also need a titanium ingot, which I believe we made a while back. 
Yeah, we put it in storage. Let's take that as well. And then we just need to make some lubricant with Creepvine Seed Cluster. Okay, so we're crafting lubricant, and I think that's everything we need. Can we now craft the mobile vehicle bay? Yes. Fabricates vehicles from raw materials. And I imagine that's going to be even faster than traveling with uh, the Sea Glide. Might allow us to go deeper as well. We haven't had to go too deep just yet. But uh, yeah, let's deploy this right away. Let's see what this looks like. Release vehicle bay, yeah. Good idea. Put that in slot 5 for now. And uh, we just toss it. Oh cool, it floats to the surface. Can we make a vehicle right now? We have little robots that make things. Uh, looks like it's grayed out. Seamoth, okay. So we have to find the blueprint for a Seamoth. And then presumably other blueprints for other vehicles. No, oh, that's something to look forward to. Is this okay to just live here? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's at the base. Should be fine. So something else I know we got the blueprint for was an advanced wiring kit, uh, which I don't think we need right away, but we are going to make one uh, just so we don't forget to make one of everything. And I'm sure it's going to be an ingredient for something else down the line. So I know we need for copper wire for that. Need a regular uh, wiring kit. And we need a computer chip. And I think that's everything. Yeah, now we can make advanced wiring kit. CPU used in advanced construction. And we're just gonna put that in storage. Ta-da! Uh, while we're making things that we don't necessarily need right away, we might as well make some enameled glass since we found stalker teeth earlier. We have glass, stalker tooth, glass hardened using a natural substrate. So we'll just have some of that in storage as well for whenever we need that. All right, let's make this compass. So we need copper wire and a wiring kit. And now, displays compass heading on the HUD, yes. That's gonna be nice. Is that automatically equipped to us? It does. Cool, and now we can see south, west, north, east. That should actually help with my uh, looking for stuff that we have on the map. All right, well, let's continue exploring points of interest in the kelp forest. Oh, I think this is the next one. Yeah, looks like another large wreck. Oh, and we've got this guy following us. Get away. <laughs> Back off. All right. What do we have here? Okay. Looking for scannables. Can I get on top of this thing? That looks like a door. Cut uh, cut open to access? What? So I, I guess I need a tool for that that I don't that I haven't discovered yet. So we're, we're definitely gonna have to come back to this. This looks like a compartment. Aha! Yes, things to scan. What? That's not a thing to scan? Come on. Floodlight? We can make our bases not so dark. Standard issue floodlight is designed to focus a bright beam of light in a single direction, useful in all kinds of industrial and emergency operations function in all known environments. Sweet. Any others? Abandoned PDA. And a bench. I'll read all this stuff once I get to the surface. I just want to scan everything first. Stasis rifle fragment? Oh my god, what does that mean? We're gonna have to get a stasis rifle, that sounds awesome. We can finally have something to use against some of those deadly enemies. I think that's everything in here. What a good haul. Is there another door? Sealed door. Okay, so I think that's the thing that just allows me easier access. So maybe I actually... I, I don't think I actually do have to come back here. I think it was just easier access than this little compartment. Anything else in the surrounding area? It's just looking like a bunch of plants. I'm not seeing any other debris. Nothing else? Yeah, this kelp part. This kelp forest is beautiful. Um, yeah. Alright, I guess that's it. What does the stasis rifle say? 
Stasis Rifle uses patented technology to slow time around an entity to as near to a full stop as the laws of physics will permit. May not function correctly on larger life forms. Huh. Common applications include slow fasting moving mechanisms such as fan belts. Uh, navigating perilous spaces by freezing potential threats. That's pretty cool. What else did we find? Degazi survivors. Uh, okay, it looks like more story that I'm not too interested in. Oh, interesting. I was swimming around exploring and I think I found the entrance to that geyser that we explored in the Safe Shallows episode. Yeah, remember that cave that looked like it was going into a different biome? I think this is this is the cave. Ooh, a sandstone. Yoink. Alright, before we do anything else, let's try making a floodlight now that we have the blueprint for it. Uh, where do we want to put this thing? Probably right here. This seems good. Is it facing away from me or facing towards me? I'll try doing it like this. Is it working? Yeah! Look at that, now our base is all lit, even at nighttime. Sweet. Wonder what kind of ramifications that has on my power. Uh, seems fine. Awesome. Okay, let's head to the next place. Ooh, I think I see the next thing. It looks like another life pod. Anything around? No. Let's just check the perimeter real quick. Yeah, it looks like there's a scannable. Let's grab that quick titanium. Anything else? Before we actually go inside. What's here? Another mobile vehicle bay fragment. Okay. Let's see what's inside here. It looks pretty special. Is that a fabricator? Can we actually make use of any of this? Abandoned PDA. Life Pod 3 crew log. Integrating new PDA data. And a data box. Oh, this is the Companus. We already had this. Okay. Well, that's fine, I guess. Not really much here if you already got the Compass, it seems. Is there anything else I'm missing? No storage? We can't actually access any of this. Huh. What is their what does their life life pod log say? Hmm. Oh, can I play it? Is that what that says? You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell I rigged to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? I'm sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the light pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. Hmm. So the life pods came from the Aurora, I'm gathering. And I guess there's going to be several more that have more... Oh god, it's one of those creepy things. Let me get out of here. There's going to be several more life pods that are... Uh, giving some of the backstory about the crew that was on the Aurora, I suppose. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up our Kelp Forest episode. We did quite a lot this episode, and uh, frankly, I have more hours of footage than I know what to do with, and um, it's almost certainly mostly going to be edited out because there's a lot of just sort of blindly searching around and uh, figuring out what to do and not really doing anything interesting, so <laughs> it might take a while to edit this together, but uh, we, we did a lot. We explored most of the biome. We crafted a whole bunch of stuff, including our first bases, now that we have access to the kelp forest materials. We scanned the new life forms in the biome. We discovered the points of interest. And uh, yeah, we made a whole bunch of new tools like the sea glide and the air bladder. Definitely a lot of progress made this episode. Next episode, we're going to be heading over to the... What is it called? Let me check my spreadsheet. Grassy Plateaus is the next one on the list. I believe that's the biome we saw in a, in a previous episode that was like a bunch of blood red grass in like a deep field. So we're going to be checking that out next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then.